All right, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, everybody. Thank you so much for coming back to another session of 99 Names of Allah. And this is our 13th session. So as you know, we're, we're kind of blown by, but yesterday we had the privilege of having Sister Rina al Hanay um, to be with us to recite beautifully the Asma'il Husna, the 99 names. And today you, you're stuck with me. So, uh, you know, let's, let's bring it back down to earth, but inshallah, we'll, we'll have some future guests uh, if things plan out as well. Last time we covered the names of Al Ghafur, Al Shakur, and Al Ali. Al Ghafur was the all forgiving. Al Shakur was the uh, grateful, the one from whom like gratitude uh, transcends, the receptive, the grateful one, the understanding. And Al Ali was the most high, the one who is sublime. And so these names really tied in beautifully to our current situation and current state in Ramadan as we are fasting, as we are uh, trying to purify ourselves, especially as we're in the second 10 days of Ramadan, which the Prophet Muhammad marked as the days of forgiveness and the, the days of Maghfirah. And so uh, it's very critical that not only do we, do we recognize forgiveness, not only do we recognize gratitude, and not only do we recognize the highness of Allah compared to the rest of the creation, but we flip this back on ourselves as well, that we become more forgiving. We become grateful and uh, in showing gratitude and in similarity by seeing these things and by incorporating these things and by seeing Allah as the most high, we lift up how equal we all are before Allah, uh, like the teeth of a comb. So today we will be covering Al-Kabir, Al-Hafid, and Al-Muqit. And Al-Kabir is the greatest, Al-Hafid is the one who preserves, and Al-Muqit is the, uh, the preserver, the protector, the one who nourishes. And so uh, we've got three really beautiful names to discuss here. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the Asma'il Husna. So let me jump, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Bismillah. And just a, just a reminder, you are invited to use the space to recite, to center yourself, whatever it takes to just, just hold yourself in a space where these names just really flow. Like I said, you don't, know, have, you don't have to know each of these names. You don't have to memorize them at the moment or anything like that. You just really have to feel that divine presence just enter in all these names and attributes. So with that, let us go and get started. Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Hu Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus as-Salam المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الواب الرازاك الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الهسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصع الهكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الهميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الهي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر 
الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور الهادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور So with that let us begin with our discussion of our names for today so bismillah we mentioned we start with al kabir al kabir is a name that we may not be all that familiar with but one that we recite and we have heard so often so al kabir refers to allah as the greatest translated as the greatest but it connotates these meanings of greatness these meanings of dignity this meaning of distinguishment and al kabir is that boundless expansion in time and space that infinite omnipotent omnipresent uh, entity that's presence that's presence is felt everywhere and seen everywhere and it encompasses both the presence and absence of the creation and everything so it's just this all encompassing entity and attribute of allah and it has that same root of a name we had covered earlier of al mutakabbir and it means to become or to be great to be large to grow to increase so you kind of hear these connotations of expansion to become greater to expand and to enhance and this all encompassing uh, greatness of al kabir also includes opposites also includes the opposites not just in terms of the the positive attributes in terms of that but it also you it also includes those attributes which we may not associate in terms of the the things that are covered within greatness that it's used to help dissolve things like arrogance it's help used to dis, uh, dissolve things like competitiveness that, that that is harmful inflation ego uh, egoism and all these things that sometimes are underneath like this this creation of greatness that that sometimes get out of control al kabir covers even that in the sense that uh, al kabir is not limited to that which is just good al kabir covers this stuff but it helps keep these things in check or can be used as such and as mentioned that al kabir helps free ourselves of the ego because we we recite that allahu akbar in our in the salah in the uh, in the adhan in anything that we do if something good happens we say allahu akbar and oftentimes this is translated as uh, allah is great or god is great or something like that along those lines but the meaning of allahu akbar is actually closer to allah is greater that god is greater it connotates a growing denotation uh, uh, denotion of the meaning of great and so not only when we do something do we say allahu akbar or anything like that but we say to ourselves allah is greater so when we think about when we're starting the prayer we say allahu akbar some people commentate that it's like you're putting the the world behind you you're putting all of these things your ego anything that's weighing on your heart all that stuff behind you as you raise your hands and you say allahu akbar that god is greater than that i might be going through some kind of a you know rough patch here and there i might be you know at odds with my faith i might be at any kind of crossroads that i might see myself at but at that moment allah is greater i might be in a dispute with my family member or what not and we might be quarreling over something but hey it's a time for prayer let's go ahead and pray and you put that behind you and allah is greater and so you remind yourself you just remind yourself of that intention that god is greater and this as i mentioned it not only helps to uh, free ourselves of our ego but it helps transform us it helps us transform ourselves by conquering that ego by connecting our senses and our perceptions with our deep self the the transformation of our not just ourselves but of our qualities so when we think about this name when we think about transforming when we think about saying something like allah is greater we think about we think deeply we don't we don't just say like okay allah is greater like okay i guess like this wasn't really worth it but we start to think about like what what like why is allah greater not just why is allah greater but why am i 
having to kind of wrestle with that? Like what, what, what's holding me back from just acknowledging that or what's, what's holding me back from having to make that reminder that I have to say Allah is greater. And so this name allows us to really recognize our smallest deeds that are connected to the greatest. And they are, and they're always a part of something greater. So this, this name also helps us not only minimize that ego that, and, and, and to soften the heart and to help us show that Allah is greater, but also to show that because Allah is greater, even the smallest things we do can have the most amplified meanings in Allah's dimension. That uh, if we are to give a small amount of charity, of course, in this world, if we give just like a few dollars or something, it doesn't maybe feel meaningful or maybe not that doesn't really look as meaningful as we had hoped it to be. But in Allah's balances, in Allah's scales, in Allah's uh, realm and this, the scale of how these deeds balance out, the deeds, the actions are not judged by how small they are or how big they are, but of their intention. The deeds are judged by motives. And so you see there then those smallest deeds that we do, the ones that we might not get counted for or get an award for or get recognized for, those are sometimes those greatest deeds. And Al-Kabir -Al helps us show that even the greatest things we can do can be the smallest thing. And lastly, this name helps us helps helps protect us from that carelessness. Helps it's so, it's very much so like th these other names of Allah we've talked about that not only help polish the ego but help keep us in check, but help keep us uh, and our hearts in check and help us to refine our hearts because at the end of the day, whenever we conclude that day, wherever we might be, in this case we check in with ourselves at a certain amount of times, whether five times or so for prayer or whatever it may be, but we check in with ourselves to say Allahu Akbar that wherever we are that God is greater not just God is great God is great God is always great but God is greater at that moment you center yourself so your prayer is no longer just a ritual your prayer is an active form of conversation an active form of engagement with you and the divine so you say God is greater wherever I might be God is greater Allah is greater and so I'll conclude with three things for this name uh, from uh, Abu Sa'id and he says that three things allow greatness to develop in human beings in us. One is to be grateful when we are given. Two, to forgive when someone harms us. And three, when we feel anger, to let softness wash over that anger before we can express it. So we see how Al-Kabir plays into these things in connection with the names that we discussed yesterday of Al-Shakur as well as Al-Ghafur, that al Kabir really works with these names in tangent to not just soften that heart, but to help us recognize first and foremost that Allah is greater. And then it opens up the doors for gratitude. It opens up the doors for forgiveness. And then when we do the, each of these things, being grateful, forgiving someone, or to let our anger calm down, when we do these things, it really helps us then uh, not just do a good deed, but it helps us do something that is then amplified in the hereafter. It's something that's amplified on Allah's, on Allah's scale. It may not feel that significant for you to tell someone, yeah, I forgive you, or to ask for forgiveness, but just imagine what scale that has on Allah's level. And so we keep this in mind as we think about the deeds that we do. There's no small thing that we can do that doesn't have a potential or has an amplification for greatness. So Al-Hafid is the one who preserves. Al-Hafid is connotating meanings of protection, meanings of preservation, meanings of just protecting everything and to safeguarding. It protects everything, it encompasses everything, whether its size is that of an atom or it's the size of a world or a galaxy or anything like that. So we see this protection on so many different scales. And similar to al muhaymin it carries a divine name of protection, it expresses that everything it's enfold, is enfolded in that divine protection and its root carries a meaning of that same preservation, protection, guarding, defending, safekeeping. And it helps really with these feelings of lack of protection that we might feel not in, not in just in the sense of the literal, but in the sense of the spiritual. We might not be safe, feeling safe with our faith. We might not fe be feeling safe where uh, our identities are. This name helps us to reconcile those things. These, this name helps us to work through some of those things when we have the feeling of not having enough, not having enough faith, not having enough resources to carry on with our faith. And it leads to inner security, insecurity, and fear. And so this name helps to restore that. 
like I said, when, when we lift up that this name is the protector, we automatically think about our security systems or whatever it might be that keeps us uh, just, you know, corporeally safe or physically safe. We don't think about the protection that our hearts need, which is which are under attack and our, our senses that are under attack 24 hours a day by so many different things, by ourselves, by outside content, that uh, Al-Hafid really protects those as well. And so we... When we when we take us when we take this name into account, it really takes us back into an uprightness that leads us to truthfulness because it it helps us be conscientious of what are we needing protection from? What do we need Allah for? Do I just need Allah to help me provide for food on the table? Do I need Allah just to be there when I ask for duas? Or do I need Allah there just like I need my my own skin, which is which which protects my body, which keeps me alive? Do I need Allah there just in, in, in this omnipresence and what helps us reevaluate that relationship and that need for Allah. And it's not a bad thing to always need Allah. Allah is that entity that you need, that, that being that you need, unlike any other uh, entity in this world. And so this name, as we, as we wind up with this name here, it helps us release ourselves from that feeling of being alone and having to take everything upon ourselves. Again, if we just view Allah as restrained to the prayer mat or in between the binds of a book, there's not so much that we can maybe associate Allah being able to do for us. But if we see Allah as protective of us, as our own skin, as our uh, oxygen that we breathe in, then we start to see Allah very differently. We start to see Allah in a very different manner and that we need Allah, not just that we can use Allah or we can depend on Allah or anything like that, but Allah is a fundamental part of our existence and the, our survival. And so, as I mentioned, this isn't just a literal protection, but this is a protection, again, against the ego. The ego, you'll notice, is a recurring theme in each of these names because it's something that just comes out of control for each of us as humans. And so each of these names, in some way, shape, or form, touch on the ego to help soften it, helps protecting against not just the literal protection, but the uh, negative thoughts we might have, the negative deeds we might think about. And then subsequently, when we incorporate this protection, when we recognize this protection, we then want to protect other people, not just their safe being, but their own, their personal dignity. We talked about the human dignity series that uh, that Muslim Space is doing this Ramadan. This name helps, helps us facilitate and be agents of bringing human dignity and uplifting human dignity in others, not just defending someone when they're under harm. This makes us more proactive in that sense. So that protection on inner and outer levels. And so when we carry this quality, we radiate that protection on not just ourselves, but on all of creation that exists and all things. And so as this protection goes, it leads you to truth. It leads you to finding your creator because you're now all aware of your creator and what your creator is protecting you of. And so as we uh, go through this name, uh, as we think about this name, Al-Hafid causes us not just to preserve and uh, to protect humanity, but also preserve and protect ourselves, to preserve uh, that world around us that we've been given. So each of these names ties with one another, but it allows us to protect and preserve our senses and our, uh, our feelings and feelings from those, that feeling of turmoil, the feeling of rage and anger, the feeling of lower impulses, that feeling of arrogance and the uh, ego that spins out of control. This is what Al-Hafid can help protect and provide. And so just to lift this up as we go in. Now we, uh, we, we go into the name of al muqit so Al-Hafid was in the sense more of the preserver, so preserving and uh, protecting on that, on, 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 with respect to that which is internal, that which we might associate with outward protection, but Al-Hafid really is on the center of preservation, so keeping you, so keeping you going. And al muqi ties into this of not just the preserver, not just the protector, but the one who nourishes. We recall this name from Ar-Razak, the provider. So this name really beautifully ties in some other names as well, but al muqit is the one who has power over everything, the shaper of fate, the one who assists in all spiritual situations. And it has this root meaning of feeding, of nourishing, of submitting, of sustaining, of supporting, and uh, providing for, and uh, not just giving food, but also giving provision, and supporting, and uh, just helping to survive and to, uh, to, to liven up. Al-Muqit gives each creature 
each creation, its strength, its body, its food, and its heart, and its knowledge, and its vision, its intuition, as appropriate to its limits and as its accord. And so it also not just gives this literal provision, it gives a spiritual provision, the food of the heart, and imparts that deep, comforting knowledge, that deep, comforting just sakina, that tranquility that sometimes is not manifested in food or anything else that we can tangibly take in. al muqit is really a nurturing love. It's a nurturing love because it also uh, just helps us not only be provided for, but it does so in a manner that is, is a very nurturing way. It doesn't just give food and then it's there. It, it, the name al muqit really connotates as if a, a, a baby being uh, suckled by the mother, a baby being provided by the mother, a baby being fed by, uh, by its parent just in such a delicate manner. And so you, you see this connotation that that same type of love that's manifested there, that same type of love that is there carries into the meaning of al-muqith and how al-muqith provides for the creation. Al-Muqit also then, in terms of doing this, like all the other names, grants an awareness that lets us see the needs of ourselves, but also of others. We see the needs of others, and we are given that strength to satisfy those needs in the right way and the right time. And so if you believe in yourself, if you really are, uh, are, are aware of yourself and you're, you know who you are, you know where you are, you also then uh, not just know the protector, you also then not just know the preserver, but you know the one who provides for you. And so the difference in Al-Muqit and al uh, that that we can lift up here is Al-Muqit really creates you know that food that's responsible for everything on the spiritual and physical level it's the creation of the sustenance creation of that uh, provision creation of these things which will keep us going and al-razak al-razak has that wider dimension that includes everything we need from love and compassion and so you kind of see that how you know you have this spiritual and uh, physical food that's created for for us on a sustenance level and you have al razak that has an even wider dimension that has everything that includes love compassion that includes everything that's there and so we can see how one's maybe a little bit more specific and the other one just like another name just like these other names we've talked about how like al rahman is the wide open sky of mercy al rahim is a laser focus on on ourselves so we can see how some of these names work together but at the conclusion of this al muqit really helps us deal with our spiritual hunger the hunger that we have when we go through this world not just physically but just in terms of our uh, our spirituality we we really do get hungry we get starved so we lift this name up alongside al hafid alongside uh, al kabir that we recognize allah is greatest but when we say allah is greatest and allah is greater we recognize that Allah is also the one who helps preserve us where we are, helps protect us where we are, and helps keep us going, but then also in keeping us going, nourishes us, nourishes us like a baby and a mother on a journey, and nourishes us with that tender love, but also in that tender love is protecting of us, protecting us and keeping us going. So we hold these names to be mindful of Allah. We hold these names to remember that as we go through Ramadan, as we go through any day, we're mindful that it is Allah who preserves, who protects, and who is greater. So inshallah, we conclude today with the dhikr of these names, and we reflect on these names that we may incorporate them in our everyday routine here in Ramadan and forward. So bismillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Kabir, 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 Ya Kabir, Ya Kabir, Ya Kabir, Ya Kabir. Ya Kabir, Ya Kabir, Ya Kabir, Ya Kabir. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. 
Al-Hafiz, 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 Ya Hafiz, 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 Ya Hafiz. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Muqeet, 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 Al-Muqeet. Al-Muqeet, 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 Al-Muqeet. Ya Mukit, 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 Ya Mukit. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So brothers and sisters, whether you are joining us here in the space, you're watching this live, you are watching this in the future, may we recognize that Allah is indeed greater. Allah is greater, but not in a sense that we shed everything that is significant to us. We remember that Allah is greater, Allah is provided, but Allah will also preserve, Allah will also protect. So may Allah keep you in this preservation, this protection, and you recognize this greatness that we may close out this Ramadan and this day in success, inshallah. Thank you so much. We'll talk, see you all tomorrow then. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.